Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at quarks, so let's get started. Now we already saw in the theory video for the standard model that there are six types of quark, and it tells us them here again, so we've got the up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. And it says that each quark has its own charge, expressed as a fraction of the magnitude of charge on an electron, which is plus 1e, e, where e is the magnitude of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, which is on your data sheet in the exam. So if you look here, it says the quarks and their associated charge are shown below. And it's a good idea to try and remember the charge on each quark in terms of this magnitude of the electron charge e. But sometimes you will be given them in questions in the exam. So in the order of up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom, you can see the charge goes in a pattern of plus 2 2 thirds e to then minus a third e to plus 2 thirds e to minus a third e and so on. So you need to remember that an up quark has a charge of plus 2 thirds e, but the down quark has a charge of minus a third e. The charm quark has a charge of plus 2 thirds e, whereas the strange quark has a charge of minus a third e. And lastly, the top quark has a charge of plus 2 thirds e, and the bottom quark has a charge of minus a third e. And to remember these charges, it's useful to remember the quarks in pairs, as up, down, charm, strange, and top and bottom, where the first one, like up, charm and top have a charge of plus two thirds e, whereas the other ones have a charge of minus a third e, the down, strange and bottom quarks. And it says you will notice that each quark has a charge of either plus two thirds e or minus a third e, and quarks never exist alone but combine to form hadrons. These combinations can only exist where the overall charge is a whole number, and that's an important rule that you need to remember. So we never find quarks by themselves, they're always in combinations to form hadrons where the overall charge on the hadron is a charge of a whole number, like 0, 1 or minus 1. And how do we know quarks exist? Well, it says here that evidence for the existence of quarks comes from high energy collisions between electrons and nucleons carried out in particle accelerators. And remember we've seen the different types of particle accelerators in previous theory videos for the particles and waves topic, and we looked at how those work. Now it goes on to say that since quarks are fundamental particles, they have their own antiparticles called antiquarks. So remember every fundamental particle, otherwise known as a matter particle or fermion, will have its own antimatter particle. And it's the same for quarks here. So antiquarks exist. And it says that antiquarks have the same symbol as their corresponding quark, but with a bar on top. So for example, an anti-up quark has a symbol U with a bar above it, and an anti-strange quark has a symbol S with a bar above it. And these are lowercase letters, remember. And lastly, it says that antiquarks will have the same magnitude of charge as the quark, but with opposite sign. So for example, the up quark, remember we said, has a charge of plus two thirds E, but that means the anti-up quark must have the same charge, but with opposite sign. So it would have a charge of minus two thirds E. And for the anti-strange quark, we can look at the strange quark first of all, which remember has a charge of minus a third E. So that means the anti-strange quark must have a charge of plus one third E. So antiquarks have the same magnitude of charge as their corresponding quarks, but with the opposite sign. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.